So I want to go over how to make a histogram. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a uh, frequency distribution and then you're going to turn that frequency distribution into a histogram. Now, when I look at this, this data is not in order, so I'm going to start by highlighting and I'm going to put it in order. So I'm going to go here to data. No. Hold on a second. They like to move stuff on me every five minutes. Sort and filter. Okay, so highlight it. No, I think in this case I'm just blind. And uh, sort smallest to largest. And obviously you can use the custom if you have more than one thing. This then tells me that I need to go, you can see here, I have from the top, I have 188 and I go to the bottom of 114, which is 74. And say I want, you know, uh, it's really up to you what you could do. You could do six classes. I'm going to probably do seven, seven classes. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of classes. I'm going to do classes of 10. Um, and it's really, again, up to you what you want to do, um, you know, how many you want. And so, you know, you kind of judge that based on how big it is. Obviously, if you have a wider span, you're going to want bigger classes. So I'm going to start there, and I'm going to do 110 to 119. Okay, so this is my strontium 90 levels. Okay, and so you'll notice I'm putting an apostrophe here, and that's because I want to make sure it reads it as text. If I don't, so if I do 130 to 139, this actually does okay, um, but if you're not careful, sometimes it's going to turn it into, depending on the numbers, it might turn into dates, it might do something else. You can be sure it will not if you put that little apostrophe. The apostrophe won't show anything. It just forces it to read it as text. So then 150 to 159. Okay, and my obsession with it looking right means that I need to have the same thing here. So 160 to 169, 170 to 179, and 180 to 189. And do you need to use these? No. Sometimes the problems will tell you what to use, but in general you use whatever makes sense to you. And then I'm just going to count how many goes in each. And there are ways to make Excel do it for you. Most of them are more work than they're worth, unless you have like a couple thousand entries. For this, it's just easy to do it by hand. So then I need to go for 120 to 120. So you can see this is easy, but I'm going to show you when I get to this. So 130 to 139. You'll notice here I count them, but if you look down here, count five. So I'm letting Excel do my work for me. I'm just doing 140 to 149, nine. 150 to 159, down here, 13. Um, 160 to 169 is 6. Okay, my 170s is 2, and this is. Now, the last thing I always do is I always check, and so I auto sum, and then I click on all these. And oh, 40, 40 and 40. This, by the way, when you do your uh, histograms and frequency distributions your project, this is the first thing I check, and this is when you say, you're missing a data point. That's because I checked this and you had 110 and now I only see 109. So that's this. So first step, create the frequency distribution. Again, unless you're specifically told the width and the number of classes up to you, I would not do less than five. So when you're looking at it, I, I would do that five minimum. Then what you're going to do is you are going to highlight all this data. You're going to go to insert and you're going to go here and you're going to pick one. Now, if you want it to look like an official one, so right here, gap width. Yeah, it went the wrong way. There we go. This will then get rid of this gap width, and all I did was click on this, and this brings it up, and I can fix that. You can see down there are my things. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, and I want to add axis titles. I want, um, so that likes both my things. Now I could, if I wanted data labels, you can see that, data table. I'm, don't really like any of that, but it just depends. And again, it depends on what works for you, you know, okay? Like, I don't need that legend. 
the trend line not that useful, but depending on how many you have, some of these some of these labels or data tables or the bars might be useful to you. And you can change all these. Remember, so this set, you can change all this. This is all movable. So if you don't like something, especially in your project, you can change it. So I'm going to redo this. Always make sure so this is Stronium 90 levels. Okay. So this down here is my Stronium 90 levels. And this up here, this and this is always going to be your frequency. And so there is my finished uh, both frequency distribution and my histogram. And remember in the project, both of these are required. It just kind of depends on what you do. But, you know, hopefully this helps you do it. Could you do this graph by hand? Sure, you could. Um, but the the this does a lovely job of doing it. Um, and as I said, there are ways if you look to have Excel figure this out for you, but I think most of them are more effort than their work. Again, unless you're starting to talk thousands of data points, then they're not.